Watch this scene. Watch it carefully. Keep your eye on Bob. He's number eight. What did you see? Do you think Bob's action was honest or dishonest? If you saw such an incident, what would you do about it? That incident came to involve each of us in this room. And it caused us to consider the subject of honesty from many angles. It sure did. That's why Mr. Barker, he's athletic director of our school, suggested that we talk it over with you because well, maybe it'll help you to know just what we found out about honesty. And we found out plenty. To be honest may sound easy. Some of the time it is. But it can be a real problem. Especially when wanting to be honest conflicts with other things you want to do. Now, getting back to that scene in the locker room. It happens that Jim was a witness. Let's see again exactly what Jim saw. you have done. I wanted to do the right thing, the honest thing. But what was it? Question Bob about it? Tell Ben that Bob was in his locker? Report it to Mr. Barker? I didn't know what to do. So I put off doing anything. That night, I didn't get much sleep. The next day at school was awful. I just had to do something, tell somebody. Then, after school, well, I guess when you're in a state like that, it doesn't take much to set you off. Say, it's Bob! Uh, looks like he's buying himself a present. Sure does. Let's ask him over. Let's not. Bob, what do you mean? That money he's spending. I know where he got it. In the locker room yesterday, after he thought everybody had gone, I saw Bob take something from Ben's pants pocket. I was late dressing, I saw it. I guess it doesn't take a detective to figure out where he got the money to buy that pen. But, Bob, I can't believe it. Did you ask Ben if he was missing any money? Not yet. Have there you reported it? Not yet. But you have to. You ought to tell Mr. Barker about it right away. No, you don't. You tell Mr. Barker, and whatever else happens, he'll kick Bob off the team. Where will we be with our star center gone and half the schedule left to play? Gee, Nick, when you put it that way. I didn't know what I was going to do. But I'd realized I shouldn't have blurted out in public that way. So I asked the kids to promise me not to say a word. And did they? Yes, we promised. But then... This one's on me, Terry. Here's what happened. After Jim and Nick left the drugstore, Terry and I talked about what Jim had told us until... Terry, there's nothing for you to do but tell Mr. Barker about Bob. But we promised Jim. A promise to tell a lie doesn't count. I didn't promise to tell a lie. It's the same thing. I can't understand your being so calm about having a thief on your team. It's your duty to tell Mr. Barker, and if you don't, I will. Well, there I was. Wanting to be square with Jim, but, well, I didn't want Rose mad at me, and it did seem dishonest to conceal a thing like that. So at practice the next day, I'd made up my mind to speak to Mr. Barker. 
I don't know just how I was going to say it, but Nick and Jim had seen me. They moved in fast to keep me from talking. Well, I didn't get to speak to Mr. Barker that day. I'm not sure I wanted to. Anyway. Anyway, when I found out what happened, I marched right into his office the next day and told Mr. Barker. Now, you've seen what actually happened, what Jim saw. Well, here's the picture I described to Mr. Barker. I gave Mr. Barker. At the time, I really thought I was telling the truth. But, of course. Welcome back to you, Rose. But now let's have a little skull practice. Of course, after Rose made a report, I did what was the obvious thing for me to do. I questioned Bob and Ben. And I found that that can wait. Right now, let, let's see what pointers we can pick up about honesty. Well, one thing I learned to be honest, you have to find the truth. That's not always easy. I saw Bob take something from Ben's locker. And then I saw him buy an expensive pen. It seemed he had stolen some money. But you didn't know I'd stolen it. That's right. And you didn't even give me the benefit of the doubt. No. You should have asked yourself some questions, Jim. Is it logical to think that Bob would steal? Does it jive with your past experience of the way Bob operates? Jim, your physics teacher might say that you uh, formed your hypothesis and jumped to your conclusion. You skipped that all-important part of testing your hypothesis. Sometimes it takes a lot of testing to find the truth. But now can we draw up another general principle about honesty? I'd say the next step is pretty obvious. Tell the truth. Is it that simple? No. I don't think it is simple. And certainly the way I described Bob slinking in and taking the money, that wasn't the truth. At least, not the way Jim told me the story. Maybe it was my fault. I wasn't careful to tell you exactly what I saw. Let's call it express the truth. We mean being careful that what you say is the truth. And also being careful when you talk about a thing, being sure that people understand what you mean. But there's something more to being honest than just telling the truth. When I promised Jim not to say anything, and then went to you intending to talk, wasn't that dishonest? And what about me? Maybe I wasn't honest when I broke it up and wouldn't let him tell. We said at the start that honesty often involves conflicts. Let's think back. It seems to me, Terry, that your intentions were honorable. Your conflict was between your pledge to Jim and your own sense of doing what was right. You believed you were doing the right thing, but Nick stopped you. There's a good deal to be said for his intentions, too. He was thinking of the good of the team. Not that I'm saying he was right. It ever came about that we had to harbor a known thief on our team in order to win games. I guess I wasn't thinking very deep, but I could just see the whole season blowing up in our faces. Maybe, maybe inside, I didn't really believe Bob was a thief. Inside. I think that's the clue to this bigger thing we're seeking. How's this? Know yourself. Examine your motives. Know what you're doing and why you're doing it. If your intentions aren't honest, then your deed can't be completely honest. I guess this is the time for me to explain my hypocrisy. When I came in to tell Mr. Barker about Bob, I started by saying certain things. 
what I said and what I was really thinking were two different things. It was something like this. Mr. Barker, there's something you ought to know about one of your boys. There's something I want you to know about one of your boys. The boys won't say anything, so I feel I must be honest and tell you. I wish I didn't have to be the one to tell, but I want to be sure that you find out about Bob Foreman. And when you do, I can just see it. You'll kick Bob off the team, and Terry will become the regular center. My Terry. All he needs is a chance. be the star of the team, and I'll be sitting on top of the world. That, Mr. Barker, is the real reason why I had to tell you. Whether or not I thought I was telling the truth, my motive being what it was, I was not being honest. Thanks, Rose. This hasn't been easy, I know. But you've learned a lesson. A lesson in honesty. Honesty to yourself and honesty to others. That lesson will stand you in good stead all your life. I, I think we've all learned a good lesson. I've always heard that honesty is the best policy. Now I'm catching on to why that's so. It isn't always easy to be honest. But when you have a problem involving your own honesty, it'll help you to remember these three pointers. Know yourself. Be sure of your intentions. The motives behind what you're doing and saying. Find the truth. Test it in the light of past experience and by checking in every way you can. And express the truth. Make sure you say what you mean to say. And make sure your meaning is clear to your listeners. Now, Bob, tell us the truth. What really happened? Well, as for that fancy pen, I'd wanted just such a pen for a long time. And I bought it with money my aunt gave me for my birthday. And as for what happened in the locker room, well, it was this way. As soon as I finished dressing, I headed out into the gym. Then I remembered something and came back. I looked around for Ben, but he wasn't there. So I went to his locker. You see, Ben had been doing sound effects for the school radio program that morning. And he had borrowed something we'd need in practice. That's all. Honest. 